Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, there's so much news going around that I'm going to go ahead and condense this video into like three or four articles all together, okay? But I'm going to leave chapters in the bottom. I figured out how to do chapters and it's so easy that I'm like, why haven't I been doing this in the past? I'm going to leave chapters in the bottom. That way, if you want to fast forward to the next topic, you can. And the first one is going to be this. When the Treasury Secretary... All right, when the Treasury Secretary, whose job is supposed to be handling the country's bills, right, making sure that the government is paying its bills, when that person, in this case a she, when Ms. Janet Yellen urges world leaders to fight food insecurity, ladies and gentlemen, you better start to worry. And if you're not prepping, you better start to prep. Because when I saw this, I was like, what in the world is she doing warning about food insecurity and warning about food shortages and starvation and stuff like that? She's the Treasury Secretary. Maybe she ought to think about talking to the President and not printing 80% of all of the money that's ever existed in the United States of America in the last two years, which is an inflationary factor on everything, not just food, instead of worrying about food insecurity, which... I'm sure there are other more qualified people to do, but it's just me being very critical. But that's our job, ladies and gentlemen, as citizens, is to be critical of our government so we can keep them in check. That is how we maintain our liberties, although it hasn't been working very well with all of the censorship. But here it says, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen urges world finance leaders to fight food insecurity. What are they going to do? Print more money? Is that how they're going to fight food insecurity? They're going to, you know, make food appear out of thin air by printing money. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen urged world finance leaders on Tuesday to get concrete as they look for ways to combat looming crisis over food insecurity around the globe that Russia's war in Ukraine has made even worse. Everything is Russia's war in Ukraine, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't see this coming before this January or February, whatever, whenever this stuff started happening between Russia and Ukraine. We didn't see this coming. We've been talking about this for years. And the things that were happening before this war started off were already going to start to produce food insecurity. Not only around the world, but it will be coming to a city near you. This threat touches the most vulnerable people the hardest. The families that are already spending disproportionate amounts of their incomes on food, Yellen told fellow finance leaders during a food security meeting convened with members of the International Monetary Fund, imagine that, and the World Bank. And she says, moreover, the interconnectedness of the global food system means that people on every continent are impacted. She said that this threat touches the most vulnerable people the hardest. Well, let me ask you a question. If it didn't cost you twice as much to fill your gas tank, do you think you could afford more food? If it didn't cost you twice as much to heat your home, do you think that you could afford more food? If it didn't cost you twice as much for the food that you're paying for today than what you paid for two or three years ago, do you think you could afford more food? The answer is yes. And what does that have to do with the Treasury Secretary? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has to do with her not doing her job, with the Federal Reserve not doing its job and keeping inflation at bay, as which is one of the things they're supposed to do, right? It's one of their primary jobs, and they can't even do that. I'm not going to go through all of the inflation you know, mumbo jumbo that we can talk about here right now. I've done that before on previous videos. But let me tell you this, and this is a fact. Please do your research. Inflation is the increase of the money supply. Inflation, the money supply is being inflated. The more you have of something, the less it's worth. For example, it works the other way around. The less you have of something, the more that is worth. Right now, we have less what in the planet? less wheat available. So is the price going up or down? It's going up. Well, the more dollars you have in the system, the less that those dollars will buy. Why? Because there's more dollars in the system. That means that if you work for a living, if you are a wage earner or a salary earner, it means that it is your labor, it is your salary that is being attacked. Because now, even though you're earning more, 
the things that you have to buy to live cost even more than the increase in your salary or your wages year over year. And that has been playing out for a very long time, with the exception that the last year or so it has been ramping up because they printed so much money and it is now starting to filter in to the system and we are starting to feel it more so than what we have in the past. And she continues to say on this other article, Yellen, starvation around the world is a grave concern. In a speech given at the U.S. Atlantic Council, which is a different one on April 13th, the Treasury Secretary described work being done surrounding global food inflation and the concern around the potential for mass starvation. I'll say it again. When you hear the Treasury Secretary talking about starvation, mass starvation, you better pay attention because this is not her lane. This is not the lane of someone that is supposed to be working with finances. But maybe she is finally realizing that the more dollars there are in the system, the more that it's going to cost for people to eat. Because inflation always outpaces your wages. It always does, ladies and gentlemen. And maybe they should talk to whoever the agricultural secretary is nowadays. I don't know who it is. But maybe it's a good idea that they don't use corn for ethanol. Maybe it's a better idea that instead of using food to make fuel to put into vehicles, that we use food for food and that we drill oil and or whatever other fuels or energy we need out of our ground so that we can better you know, provide food for the people that need it and provide fuel for the people that need it. Doesn't that make sense? Use food to eat and use fuel to power things that allow us to run the machinery and the things that provide us the standard of living by which we live. Here it says corn exceeds $8 a bushel for the first time in decades on shortage fears. The cost of fertilizer is very high. Why is that? Because they're not producing as much natural gas as they could be producing. Why? Because they want to save the planet. All right. And I know I'm being a little facetious here, but, but take, take this ride with me. Now, one of the byproducts of natural gas production is used to make fertilizer. So since there's less production of natural gas, then there's less of that byproduct to work on fertilizers. Now the price of fertilizer is so high that farmers, are, instead of producing corn, now they're going to use the fertilizer to produce other commodities that use less fertilizer, like soybean, like wheat, I think cotton and peanuts, things like that. So now corn is going up a lot. And guess what corn is used for, ladies and gentlemen, with the exception of ethanol for vehicles, which is actually not even good for vehicles. It's used on a whole bunch of stuff that you and I consume on a daily basis. Some people may not want to think it or say it or even know it, but corn is used on a whole bunch of stuff that is used in the production of food. A combination of factors has sent corn futures in Chicago to the highest level in decades as investors fret over dwindling supplies. Corn futures haven't exceeded $8 a bushel since September of 2012, following a devastating drought that damaged crops across the U.S. Midwest. Now supply risks return, but for different reasons. The global outlook for corn supplies has plunged since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began in late February. The war-torn countries supplies a fifth of the world's corn and could experience a 50% decline in its output this year. And with that 50% decline, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that Ukraine has already said that they're not going to export any grains, that they're going to keep it there to make sure that their people are fed, which I agree with that. They should look out for their people first. This year's harvest could fall to a decade low as war hammers, as war hampers planting. And wow, look at that less than 50% really than what it was last year. Last year being a little over 40 million tons and this year being a little less than 20 million tons. Fertilizer prices are at record highs because of rising natural gas costs and Russia limiting fertilizer exports to unfriendly countries. The U.S. just happens to be a large importer of nitrogen and potash from Russia. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to affect the price of food as well but not as much as the last thing that I'm talking about here. And I hope that 
this next thing that we talk about doesn't come to be. But here, the president's emergency SPR, Strategic Petroleum Reserves, release is heading for Europe. So you know that 700 million barrels of oil that we keep in reserves for strategic purposes, for example, let's say that something happens where oil production stops today. Well, there's enough in the Strategic Petroleum Reserves to power our country for 35 full days. Uh, more than likely, if something like that happened where oil just stopped pumping, like right now, they would probably stretch that out because there would be rationing and uh, only vital infrastructures would be getting that oil, right? But this oil is supposed to be used for emergencies. And uh, from what I understand, this administration said here a little bit back that they were going to go ahead and start releasing 1 million barrels of that oil per day for the next 180 days in order to alleviate the prices at the pump. Well, instead of keeping that oil here, they're taking that oil and sending it overseas. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that if we ever do have a full-blown food shortage problem where people are starving, that is why I believe that our government will forsaken its people and will allow the export of foodstuff even as people within our country are starving. And that is why you must prepare. You must get ready for the inevitable. It's read history, ladies and gentlemen. This happened before. Read history and you'll know that you need to get prepared. Now, if this happens, ladies and gentlemen, people will be starving because people will not be able to afford to live, especially those that are the lower middle class to the poor. Okay, EU to impose a full embargo on Russian oil next week will send price above $185 per barrel, according to JP Morgan. I said earlier this year, I think it was around January, maybe February, all right, but I think it was closer to January. I said that this year, by the end of this year, we would see oil going up to about $200 a barrel. Now, trust me, I hope that I am 100% wrong. I hope it goes in the reverse. I hope that it goes back down to the 30s, 40s. You know, we can handle that. You know, we can handle $2 a gallon, you know, uh, gasoline. We can handle that a lot better than $4, $5, in some places $6 and $7 a gallon. Right, ladies and gentlemen? But if oil goes up to $185 per barrel, ladies and gentlemen, now, granted, for those of you that don't know what a barrel of oil is, I believe it's like 42 gallons. That is an incredible price. The price of everything, I mean everything you can think of, will just explode. And that's not taking into consideration, ladies and gentlemen, the inflation that has not caught up to us yet. Because if you remember, I mentioned that inflation is the monetary supply being inflated. And that in the last two years, we've created, the government has created 80% of all the money that ever existed. Well, not all of that money has been put out into the economy yet. Not all of that money has actually realized itself into the purchasing power of the dollars that we hold. Now, if this comes at a time when that inflation starts to catch up with us, it's going to be a lot worse than what it could be. Here it says, what was largely a theoretical modeling exercise until moments ago, it is set to go live because Reuters reports that the EU is set to declare a full embargo on Russian oil after this weekend's French election. EU gas price to shoot up as EU declares embargo on Russian oil after French election next week. Why wait until after the election to, to launch the embargo? Simple. Europe's bureaucrats are correctly terrified that the coming oil price spike to push the vote in Le Pen's favor, which is why Europe will wait until after the election. Wow, so this is all political. <laughs> I haven't read this yet, ladies and gentlemen, so this is all political. That's what this is. So they're playing with people's lives for politics. That should tell you everything right there. I'm going to end it there. I'm going to go ahead and leave the link to all of these articles in a pinned comment. I hope you're getting something out of these. Uh, I try to pick articles that I'm interested in, first of, first of all, because if I'm not interested in them, then I don't read them. 
but I try to pick articles, ladies and gentlemen, to go over with you that I'm interested in, but more importantly, that give you an outlook as to what may be coming in the future so that we can better prepare. For example, last year, I just had a little feeling, I had a little twitch or an itch, if you want to call it that, telling me that, hey, you know, fuel prices are going to go up. So what did I do? I took whatever extra money I had and I purchased an additional year's supply of heating fuel. I'm very happy that I did that. But had I not been abreast of what the probabilities were of that going on, then I probably wouldn't have done it. But I like to inform myself in this way and then take action before these things happen. So in this case, it may be a good idea to go out and get yourselves a few five-gallon cans and uh, fill, them up, fill them up with gasoline. Of course, make sure that they are approved containers for where you live, all right? You don't want your shed catching on fire, all right? So that may be a good idea. It may be that by the time that the price of gas goes up to where it's going to level out, because I believe it's still going higher from where it is now. We may have come down just a tiny bit, but I think it's going to go like this and then go up. All right? I believe that by the time that the price of gas has leveled out, you would have paid for the gas can with the savings of the gas that you put in there. Having said that, I hope you have a great day. I don't even know how many videos uh, this is for today, but uh, I hope you're getting something out of them. All right? Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prepper. I am out.